Mike, throughout Scripture, we read of Yah's expressed will and desire, how it is that he wants things to turn out. I was uh, lying in bed last night contemplating today's program. Mm, I was, I was thinking, sleeping. Yeah, well, yeah, I was trying to go to sleep, and my mind was somewhere else. <laughs> Um, I was thinking along the lines of a prayer that I've been offering uh, for some time that Yah's plan has been uh, determined from the beginning and that it is his plan that will be brought to pass. Yeah. The issue I began to have is the word plan. This is more (laughs) than a plan. This is his decreed determination. This is the way things are going to be. Uh, However, it would seem that throughout Scripture also that there are those who have opposed his will, at times thwarted his will, at least to some degree. For example, in the book of Shemot or Exodus chapter 3, Moshe is sent to to Mitzrayim to deliver the people, but Yah says, and verse number 19, but I know that the sovereign of Mitzrayim is not going to let you go, not even let by a strong hand. For a while, it would seem that Pharaoh had the ability to withstand Yah's decreed determination of how things are going to go. He said, I'm going to set them free, but it's going to be some problems. So my thought today is the the battle between covenant decreed outcomes and the will of man. Man's will still can be expressed in the earth as mankind, not just the redeemed, but mankind has been given dominion over the earth. Mike, that leads me to com- contemplate that there's liable to be a bit of a confrontation between the two, and I'm mm-hmm. wondering exactly how this thing is going to go. What levels of confrontation are we going to have to go through to see the covenant decreed determination of Yah come to pass? Okay. Well, you know, I, I, I guess the the whole thing you you go back and you listen to uh, a lot of music that was coming out during the '60s. Um, the good know, stuff. Is, yeah. The hi. The good stuff. Yeah, the good stuff. '60s and '70s. Then, <laughs> then music. You know, m- music ended uh, somewhere in the mid '70s, but. Um, you know, there was the the age of Aquarius and and Imagine and all of these songs, which some of them being very godless. Yeah. Um, but you you hear songs like uh, one of my favorites is is uh, from Styx, "Show Me the Way." I, what an amazing uh, calling that there was in that song. Um, a, a lot of the 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 songs of that era were speaking of a utopia. And there's something about a utopia that is part of our makeup. A we've got to get back to the garden, okay? That type of a thing. But what is not realized is from the moment that we lost the garden experience until the moment that it is once again realized, there's a battle, and that battle is raging. As uh, as Josh Waller's song says, there's a battle raging over a people and a land, and the the battle has a purpose. For the battle separates people. The des- it, 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 it the battle reveals your desire. How much will you battle? What kind of war will you wage? inside of you around you uh how how much will you be engaged in the battle in order to to become part of the realization of what is at the end mm-hmm. yeah, we we see this playing out in israel today uh, from the from the moment that this war began 
um, this current episode of this war on October 7th till now. The discussion has been, well, what about the political leaders of Israel? What, what will Bibi Netanyahu do? What will the Knesset do? What will be the, 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 the drive of the people? And I, I have to be very uh, honest with the, the – I've, I've been surprised, not at the people. I've been surprised at the leadership. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of B.B. Netanyahu. Um, I'm not a fan of, of really any politician because politicians cave to pressure. And it has been surprising to me that the will of the people – to fight this this battle has overcome the weakness of the politicians. We have to ask ourselves, there, there's a little politician in each of us. Will the will of our spirit overcome the will of our flesh mm-hmm. in fighting the battle to realize what is on the other end? Mike, I think about those that uh, would encounter some kind of life issue, some kind of circumstance that is um, taxing and overwhelming, and they they quote their favorite verses, they pray their prescribed prayers, and they have a mindset that says, "Well, because I quote unquote stand on the word." And I have prayed, it has to turn out in my favor. Uh, right. You and I both have um, been through enough of those issues ourselves and with others to know prayers don't always get answered the way that we would prefer. And it can be a little disillusioning, it can be deflating. It is at times a severe challenge to our belief. Mm -hmm. Uh, When we look at the heavens and say, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. How how can your will be? Mike, all the time, it's not every time that the will of Yah is accomplished. At least not in In our estimation. Yeah. Our estimation, sometimes not in our generation. Sometimes the prayers are answered, but whereas we're seeing a timeline that it has to be answered within a certain segment of our ex- life experience, Yah has a everlasting to everlasting vantage point. He's seen the end from the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's not encouraging. It's not helpful to tell someone, well, you know, uh, we're just going to have to trust him. Yeah, for me not to be in the thick of battle, talking to someone who is and say, well, you're just going to have to trust him. Yeah. Those are hollow and empty words. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what else do you say? Because we've been there ourselves at times. Um, Miracles don't always happen, at least not the way that we are anticipating them. When we read the, the story of the Exodus, for example, as I mentioned earlier, these people had to be proven by the plague experiences, encountering the first ones themselves before there was a line of distinction drawn. When it was everyone else in Mitzrayim that was under the plague, but not they themselves, there may have been a bolstering of their belief. And it's like, finally, somebody's fighting for us. But still, when the time came to walk out of the land and to be free, a majority of the rabbinical mindset says stayed behind in a broken, dilapidated, destroyed Mitzrite society and and system, trusting the revamping and rebuilding of Pharaoh more than the unknown across the sea. It didn't take but one or two days before they got to the sea and they're panicked and ready to quit, how many times in the wilderness were they disillusioned and thinking, 
This was a pipe dream that has no end. Yah is going to require of us at times more of a proving and testing than we think that we're capable of, of providing. Mm -hmm. In those moments, are we so micro focused on the immediate circumstance, or can we broaden our view and say there is a covenant promise of how everything is going to turn out? Father, I may not understand why this circumstance is the circumstance at the moment is horrible and without answer or relief. But I open my eyes to a bigger spectrum, a broader view, and understand this is just a small, small scene and a very large, large movie of things. I have to trust you for the ultimate outcome. Does that encourage anybody that said, well, you know, we'll be in the kingdom together and then it'll all make sense. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's kind of hollow itself, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it's, well, I read the back of the book and we win. Yeah. We, uh, okay. L let me, let me, let me give you an illustration on this one. There's a theme that happens in this week's Torah portion of history or Taldot, uh, beginning in, uh, Genesis chapter 25, verse 19. The theme is digging. Now, th this concept of digging, um, you know, well, I read the back of the book and and we gonna we, you know, we win. Digging takes a shovel. All right. But digging also takes somebody involved in the shovel. And the process of putting that shovel into action. We've all gone by the city workers. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my stepfather of, of blessed memory was one of them. Uh, and um, in his later year, before he retired, uh, uh, an, an old friend, a mutual friend of, of mine and his, uh, saw him on the street corner one day and, and said, um, he said, yeah, I saw Arnold today, and he was actually standing because he was known to just sit in the truck all day long. We've all seen the the uh, the city workers, and if a person's a city worker, if, if this shoe fits, you know, maybe you need to get different shoes and get to work, but – you know, one guy stand, one guy down in the in the trench digging, and uh, and five leaning on their shovels. Uh, the, the, we we you know, I've read the back of the book, and we win is kind of like leaning on your shovel and watching somebody else dig a hole, and then you taking credit for it. Or you know, we dug your, the hole. Yeah, le leaning on your shovel, waiting for a hole to appear. Yeah, yeah, or you know, yeah. Somebody else digs it, and you go, "We dug that hole." No, we didn't dig that hole. <laughs> I dug the hole. You watched. That does not mean we. So, in the beginning of this Torah portion, it uh, in in verse twenty one, it says, "Esau prayed to Yudhevave," um, and and it's the the same wording when it says, "And Yudhevave he did his prayer." It is the word that is related to dig through. So you and I, uh, you coming from more of a Pentecostal background, I came in a little later in life. Uh, the, the, old, the old folks, they, they used to say, you know, we're, we're going to pray through. Yeah. That was kind of a, a thought of digging. Well, yeah. this, this verse is like that Isaac, Isaac, is digging on one side and the Almighty is digging on the other side. And they come together. It's like Hezekiah's tunnel in Israel. Oh. Uh, it, it's like the um, up at um, uh, Megiddo. Yeah, there it is, Megiddo. I should right now. I should, to the uh, to the to the liqueur tasting right now, and I'm not. I'm talking to you. Nothing, nothing that's not disrespectful to you, but I'd rather be heading to the liqueur tasting. Um, yeah. Okay. Back on, back on track here. 
in, in both those places, there was people that began on this end and people that began on this end, and they dug through and they met in the middle. You have to you have to complete the process. And so how many people have quit digging when they were, you know, six inches from hearing the the sound of the Almighty digging through also? Meeting them in a in a place of, of prayer. Meeting them at a place of uh, but you know it, it takes it takes work to dig through Barry. It's not just you know now I lay me down to sleep kind of stuff. Um, the it's an interesting thing to listen to people pray because you can find out real fast who doesn't. Am I am I right there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm 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 thinking about praying until you pray through. I remember I remember as a, a a child or a young teen the number of times that the altar service, you know, in in our mm-hmm. tradition, every gathering, uh, probably at least ninety percent of the time concluded with everyone in the in the sanctuary around an altar up front basically mm-hmm. kneeling against the the platform facing and praying and um i remember the the previous generations looking at someone that had been weeping their way through right. prayer yeah and I can see my dad take somebody by their their arms and look at them eye to eye and say, "Are you satisfied?" Mm-hmm. That was his way of, "Did you pray it through? Did you mm-hmm. get to where it is that you needed to go?" Mm-hmm. And if they didn't answer affirmatively, <laughs> Charlie going to go after him. Dad's going to help him pray again, <laughs> right then, right there. I can just imagine Charlie Phillip and. Doing. Um, you know, uh, there was there was efforts of what they you know. Once you were were saved, born again, the next step in your agenda is you need to get sanctified. That's right. Uh, Church of God taught there is a definite second work of grace called sanctification, yeah. which was required before you received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And if you if it all happened real quick, we just assume sanctification took place in there in the middle somewhere. There you go. Fast you track. Know, but um, there was a setting of one, setting apart of oneself. I say that to say this: when we're praying about an issue, a circumstance, a trial, the process of getting that thing answered may be more about the changing of ourselves than the receiving of the answer. Mm-hmm. When you you mentioned this week's at this time of this recording this week's uh, Torah portion, it says that Yitzhak was forty years old when he married Rivka, and she was barren, so he prayed. And in that was in verse twenty one, when their children were were born, in verse twenty six it says he was sixty. Mm-hmm. What that tells us is that he prayed 20 years for his wife to conceive and bear children. Well, technically 19 years and three months. Yes. We'll round that off to 20 (laughs) years-ish. So he was determined. But it could be, Mike, that neither Yitzhak nor Rivka were in a position relationally mentally whatever to to handle the two boys that were going to be born to them these were not normal kids no i mean we're talking about the progeny of two completely separate people coming out of the same womb twins but nothing much alike 
and the warfare and the struggle that was going on in the womb is going on to this day. Oh yeah, I mean this this Torah portion is is what we're seeing in front of us right now. So, as we are praying about someone's healing, we're praying about a financial distress being resolved. Um, um, you know, some some dramatic circumstance. We're focused on, I got to get an answer. I got to get an answer. I got to get an answer. And y'all may be saying, you need to listen to me and pray about yourself or those that are involved with this answer so that when the answer comes, the answer can have positive effect. Thank you, Father, that he did not always answer affirmatively the things that I was requesting. So I was not capable or, or prepared to handle them. Father, I need a million dollars. I'm, I'm believing you. I'm laying hold of the promises. I'm ringing the prayer barrels of heaven, hallelujah, to get my million dollars. And you, you can't balance your checkbook. You, you, yeah. can't, you can't handle $10 stuck in your pocket. So we're not thinking, I got to go to Walmart. So, you know, why would why would God trust us with what we can't handle? Well, I mean, I I've I've quit working on my first million dollars. It was too it was it's too hard to get it. So I'm gonna work on the second one. <laughs> um I, I, I thought about going down to the bank and identifying as millionaire, but I don't think that they're gonna go over that one either. Uh so he began in prayer. And and then this theme, Barry, comes about with digging. Okay, he dug through in prayer, which gave him and his wife, uh, Jacob and Esau. But the digging doesn't end right there. Maybe the maybe the experience with Jacob and Esau strengthened him and prepared him for digging that he would have to do later. Mm -hmm. which would not be in prayer, but we, would be with the actual shovel. Okay. He has to, and, and people can go back and read this Torah portion. The Philistines, which is, by the way, where they got the word Palestinian from, uh, the Philistines had stopped up the wells of his father Abraham. And so the first thing he has to do is he has to dig out those wells. Now that produced a quarrel between um, between the servants, and he would end up at Beersheba, and he would dig his own well. And as I talked to you on the phone yesterday a little bit, he had he had to find he had to first unstop the wells of his father Avraham. I taught on this in, in my Living Torah message in, in more detail. He had to first unstop the wells of his father, Abraham, in order for him then to dig his own well. It's important for us to not just rely on the wells of our fathers, the wells of our ancestors. We have to dig our own well. but. Digging our own well, if we understand the topography of Israel, will connect us with the same aquifer. We can't dig our own well and find water from a different aquifer. It has to all be connected to the well, the aquifer of our father Abraham. So that's that's a, a wonderful picture there. Go ahead. Then I got another place to go. We just had this conversation with my mom uh -oh. just a couple of days ago. Mom's neighbor who lives just above her, mm -hmm. they refuse to drink water out of their well because on the opposite side of them, just up the way a little bit, is a graveyard. Uh -huh. And they are convinced that their well water is being drawn from under that graveyard Therefore, it's contaminated. I said, but mom, you drink that water and it's fine. She said, no, but they have their own well. I said, I understand that. But 
you're drinking the same water. No, they have their own well. <laughs> Mom, the same aquifer, the same yeah. water, subterranean water that is feeding their well is feeding your well. It's the same yeah. water. Then the light bulb came on. So it's interesting. We just we just had that conversation. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, here, here's something I'd, I'd never seen before in the word well, uh, bear. Uh, so we get Beersheba, the place of seven wells. But if we trace that word back just a little bit, there's, there's, we only have to go back one level with the word in Hebrew. And it is the same exact spelling, but it is different vowel points. And the word has a number of meanings, but when it says in uh, in chapter twenty six, verse fifteen, that he stopped, they stopped up the wells. The root word of the word wells is the letters on a tablet. Ah. The letters on a tablet. Let me let me give you a. Uh, this word is used. This root word is used three times. Uh, if people want to look at this, I'll give you the notes. Um, you can also go to Living Torah and listen to that program after you listen to Ten Minute Torah. Um, <laughs> so Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter one verse five, chapter twenty seven verse eight. But let me read it out of um, Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter two verse two. And Yudhavabe answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that reads it. Okay, so what we see here is uh, the, the same word that is used, uh, that is, is said plain there. Okay, make it on wells, the root word for well. So the, the this is a fascinating meaning to me, in that not only was Isaac told or or was was uh, was drawn to prayer for his wife, and he dug through to get the answer, but then he dug through the dirt of the Philistines in order to find the letters on a tablet the word so if we're willing to pray but we're not willing to study we're not going to find the answer oh that'll preach yeah i figured it would so our prayer must then i mean what what have we been experiencing barry for you and i for for 20 plus years now the digging We've been digging through the dirt of the Philistines. I, I hope people understand what I'm about to say. I'm releasing a message next month, which uh, is to our partners. I'll be glad to send it to anybody. But uh, the title is going to probably mess some people up. Is Unless I get a change on this, the title of next month's message on our through our, our uh, ministry will be, I'm not a Christian and I don't go to church. Stay tuned. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. Because the because the last seventeen hundred years have been about dirt in the well of Abraham. You and I for twenty years have been digging through the dirt to get to the tablets, the words on a tablet that will give us the living water. There's the picture. Mm. Unfortunately, what a lot of people have done, Barry, is they take a couple of shovels full and start arguing about something. Instead of digging all the way down, they they argue, um, well, is, is it, the dirt just change a little bit? Or, no, it didn't. And they start arguing about stupid stuff. The moment right we begin to quarrel, and this is in the this is in the Torah portion also, the quarreling over the wells, yeah, will not get you to the water at the bottom. 
One of the uh, definitions or, or terms associated with Philistine is wallowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want, you know, they want to wallow in it. When I think of wallowing, it, the swine <laughs> like to wallow in the mud. You know, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling someone a pig necessarily, but um, if, if when the we, oink fits. When we get down into arguing, well, the, this is the right side to dig from. Well, but but they can't. Both of you can't dig at, at the same spot. Somebody's got to dig at a different spot, have a different perspective. Not everyone's going to share yours, but if you want to wallow in an argument about how to dig the hole, you'll never get the hole dug. But I, I, I think of Mike. I think of this, this as you brought this up. These were wells. These were life-giving wells that had water in them. And rather than drink the water, the Philistines were so disgruntled with it, they put dirt in and, and filled up the own advantage that they had. And when someone else came and dug those out, so that the water returned, then they wanted to quarrel and have contention over it. Well, that's my water. The well yeah. is yours, but the water is mine. Yeah. All that kind of silly stuff. Rather than stand there and yell and scream at them, Yitzhak said, I'm going to dig another well. Mm -hmm. Yes, you get the benefit of my labor, and you're stealing it from me, but I'll go dig another well. Fine, take it. Be be blessed. Yeah. Be blessed with that, and I'm, I'll just go somewhere. Finally, he found room for himself. Yeah. Um. Wallowing in arguments does not bring about covenant resolve. It's just not going to happen. God is going to bring about his covenant, his way, in his time for those that will be willing to endure with him to the end of that process. Revelation 13 says that the systems that rise are going to wear some people out. At some point you read where there are martyrs. For their belief. Yet Yeshua taught us to pray. You pray for my kingdom to come and my will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, if he wants his will to be done and his will is going to be done, why do we have to pray for it? Why can't we just sit back and say, do it? Because in the prayer process, we become kingdom qualified. It engages us. Moshe Kempinski had a great, um, I don't know if you've gotten Moshe's uh, letter this this week, his uh, email this week. It's amazing on prayer. Moshe on, on Facebook has been doing some uh, some really good, very short teachings on prayer. Some of the best uh, words I've ever heard Moshe speak has been this this last couple of weeks on prayer. Uh, let, me, let me finish with this, Barry. You just, th this picture in my mind, it just won't go away. Um, so what is, what is, the, what is the wallering? Okay. You waller in mud, you swim in water, you, you lay on dirt, you waller in the mud and the mud is when you take the living water and you mix it with Philistine dirt <laughs> and you get a chance to waller. We need to get past the wallering. That, that's not against Tommy Waller, but uh, uh, we need to get past the the pig in the mud and and get down to where the real water is instead of wallering in the mud. I, I, I'm going to have to just kind of that, that one's going to stick with me for a while. I got a feeling that Life of Sim is going to be hearing a teaching on that this kind of spot. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> All right, Barry. Well, uh, we're going to be taking the next next week off uh, because you're going to be spending time with family. Um, yeah. I'm going to be spending time alone because my wife is going to Colorado. So if, uh, you know, anybody wants to, uh, to send food. Um, <laughs> You know, I'd be glad to give them an address and uh, preferably, you know, cooked. Uh, I'd be glad to give, a, you know, if anybody wants to to know what they can send, um, I can I can help them out. I got a feeling that uh, 
the local Thai restaurant is going to be getting a little increased business flow. And I asked Keo yesterday if he could do me garlic chick garlic turkey, and he said no. No. Yeah, but he did offer me. He did ask me to come to his house for for dinner, but it's going to be uh, honey baked ham and roasted pork. Well, there's your wallering, bud. You go waller for a little bit, right? <laughs> All right. Hey, take care. Enjoy family time. Thanks, folks, for watching. Thank you for subscribing uh, to both of our channels. It does help try to increase the uh, viewership. Comments yep. help. And sharing Good on comments social help media. better. It helps. So thank you again. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.